Later this month, Ramadan will begin. Many of us probably know Ramadan as a holy month within the Islamic traditions during which many Muslims, among other things, do not eat or drink from sunrise until sunset. One of my earliest memories from Ramadan comes from when I was about 9 or 10 years old. I had already started fasting, and I thought I was doing a pretty good job of staying away from food or drink at the time. And then one day my class had a party. I remember the teacher walking around with cupcakes, and anybody who knows me knows I love sweets. So without even thinking about it, I took a cupcake and I took a giant bite. And then a few seconds later, I realized what I had done. I was mortified. I ran to the bathroom crying, and I desperately tried to rinse out every last crumb of cupcake and icing from my mouth. I was so upset, I kept thinking that my parents were going to be so mad at me, that God was going to be so angry with me. I felt like I had failed them, and so I decided I would do everything I could to never fail them again. <laughs> and so I took some pretty drastic measures. I had headgear at the time, you know, the kind of metal ring that goes around the front of your face and hooks into some rings on your teeth. So to make sure that I never forgot Ramadan or my obligation to observe the fast, I wore my headgear to school and I didn't take it off. I basically wanted to be mindful of my duty as a Muslim. So I guess in a weirdly warped way, I had developed a mindfulness practice as a child. Well, it's been a few years since grade school, and things have changed. As a kid, the God that I knew was kind of like that angry parent who watched your every move. It's probably a God that some of you might be familiar with. But today, the God that I know, or rather, the God that knows me and I strive to remember every day, they aren't that angry parent anymore. The God that I know, the God that knows me, sounds more like this. We have created humanity, and we know what your soul whispers to you. We are closer to you than your jugular vein. This line from the Quran, it's such an intimate description of God. God, the divine, is a sustaining presence that remains close to us that creates and recreates with us in every single moment. It knows us as what we truly are, even in those moments when we are not at our best. It knows us as beings with an immense capacity for goodness and love. God, the divine, is with me when I am teaching in a classroom or protesting in the streets. The divine still knows me when I am making harmfully inaccurate assumptions. This divine source knows our potential and knows our limits. It knows what we strive for and where we struggle and remains a sustaining force in our life without our even asking. That, for me, is the grace of God. As my understanding of God has evolved, so has my relationship with Ramadan. It has become a time of grateful remembrance. A time to honor that grace and the reality that my life depends on this sustaining presence, on processes and events that I have no control over. Many Muslims use this month to read through the entirety of the Quran as a way to remember God and to devote our lives to becoming agents of a divine moral will. We practice regular prayer and the breaking of fasts as a community to help us recognize our connections to the holy, and to one another. Abstaining from food or drink, it no longer is an obligation, but it becomes an opportunity, a chance to deepen our gratitude for our access to the sustaining nature of these gifts. And it moves us to put our gratitude into action, to serve those among us whose access to these sustaining gifts has been limited by forces that are anything but divine. And abstaining from food or drink allows us to focus our attention and gratitude on the most basic gift of all. Our breath. 
My field education supervisor from this past year likes to say that our breath is the one thing that we all share. It is a universally granted gift of grace, and nobody is more or less worthy of this breath of life from God. Ramadan helps us to remember this gift of breath and encourages us to honor that breath, that life, as it is manifested in other people. By fasting, I am able to better remember not only the gift of life that I receive every time I take a breath, I am reminded of how that breath is an equalizer. It is a gift of grace, and my awareness of its universality means that if there is inequality, it is my responsibility to do something to change it. So there's another aspect to the grace of Ramadan that I kind of fought with including. I was a little hesitant to talk about Rumi during this message because it felt somewhat cliched to use him in a message about Islam, especially when there are so many other voices that address the breadth of diversity within the Islamic traditions. But after speaking with some friends about my concerns, I realized that if there was ever a time to use Rumi, this was it. So many of us are probably familiar with a hymn that uses a variation of some of his words. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of living, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come. And a few might also know the other line that goes with it. Though you've broken your vows a thousand times, Though you've broken your vows a thousand times, Though you've broken your vows a thousand times, Come yet again, come. For me, Ramadan is an embodiment of this song. Rumi, as a Sufi Muslim, was writing about that creative and sustaining force that welcomes us no matter how many times we have broken our vows, no matter how many times we have strayed from that path of goodness and love that we are innately capable of traveling. He was writing about the perpetual and universal grace of God and how the gift of life we receive, the gifts in life we receive, they are available to us even when we make mistakes. With these words in mind, we can understand Ramadan as an invitation for us to remember that welcoming and sustaining grace, however we would name its source. Fasting, eating, praying, and serving together helps us to achieve a depth of gratitude that actually shifts our physical and spiritual being. It helps us to remember to reconnect with and honor that source of life that knows us, our whole selves, with all of their imperfections, and remains with us. It is a time to explore the grace around our potential and our limitations. And Ramadan invites us to come together not only to name our limitations, but as a community to celebrate the spaces they create. We can take our time together to honor how they reflect our interdependence. Ramadan helps us develop our gratitude for how our limitations create room in our lives for God or the divine to enter in so many forms, including this community. And we can use our coming together as an opportunity to recognize where we can fill those spaces for others as agents of this divine grace. Just last month, we saw an example of how we can serve as the agents of this divine grace for one another. As a xenophobic, anti-Islam rally converged on the Islamic Community Center in Phoenix, Arizona, the members of the center did not isolate themselves. Instead, they continued with their regular prayer activities, supported by an interfaith coalition of allies that came to promote peace and love. And then, acting on the faith that people are innately capable of goodness and understanding, the members of the community center extended an invitation to their worship 
to any anti-Islam protesters who were interested in learning more. And you know what? Some of them came, and their hearts were changed. One protester said he felt welcome at the center and that he got along with its members. Another said he would never wear his offensive anti-Islam t-shirt again. The persistent welcome of the Islamic Center, that was an act of grace, filling a space where love and relationship were desperately needed. The nation and world, we observed the sins of hatred and otherizing that day, but we also witnessed the divine grace of a community that knew people would not change their hearts without an invitation to do so. In the midst of brokenness and pain, we witnessed healing and possibility. So maybe one day we'll have time travel. I'm going to go visit my nine or 10 year old self and I'm going to find her in that bathroom and I'm going to tell her that God is not angry with you. God is smiling at your humanity. The divine is loving you for trying and already supporting you, always helping you, whether or not you choose to try again.